Chapter 1 My Story In 1986, I gave my life to the Lord and became a born-again Christian. Two years later, I attended a Bible college. Once I had left Bible college, and like some other students, I soon went MIA and began to backslide, simply because I had experienced information overload and not a supernatural lifestyle. In 1989, I married a beautiful woman, Paula. My life soon became entangled in the world of business, and I became a very successful businessman, both financially and illustriously. I owned an advertising agency and had a partnership in a printing company. I was also a director and shareholder of a residential construction company and a finance company. I became so engrossed in my work that I literally worked up to 15 hours a day, six to seven days a week. The only time I was not in the office was on a Sunday morning, when I would go to church to pay homage to God. On the surface, it seemed as if I was a dedicated follower of the Lord. But in reality, my heart had turned away from God. In Matthew 13, Jesus told the parable of the sower, whose seeds fell on the different paths, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Matthew 13, 7. The thorns were indicative of the deceitfulness of riches, and this became my thorn. I was enticed and intertwined in the business world. In 1998, I came to a place in my life where the darkness of depression started to envelop me. I began to have problems with my employees, and sticky situations arose which I could not even begin to know how to handle. Relationships started to crumble all around me, and even my relationship with my wife started to corrode and was on the verge of a breakdown. In November of that year, on a Monday night at 11 o'clock, I came home late from work. Again. My family was fast asleep, and in a bid to wind down, I decided to watch CNN. Those days in Australia, it was a bit of a status symbol to have CNN as one of the channels on your television. I was watching a news report of a television evangelist who had fallen and was caught making out with prostitutes. He had actually fallen and been caught in the 80s already, and now he had been caught a second time. Although it had not made the Australian news, it did air on CNN. His activities left him prime game for being slaughtered by the media. In my self-righteous manner, I started to become very angry. My heart harbored a lot of resentment, and I started to turn against God. I remember asking God where he was when men like this were mocking him. I started to shout, Where are you, God? Lord, where are you? These men are mocking you. They're making a spectacle of you and misrepresenting you. Where are you when these things happen? Yelling even louder, I repeated, Lord, where are you when these things happen? Where are you when these people mock you? In disgust, I switched off the television and threw the remote control on the couch. Looking back, I realized I had no right to judge these men of God. I was acting with a self-righteous attitude and my own life was a train wreck. I lay down on the couch, and just as I started to doze off, I was startled by a banging sound. I got up and walked down to the kitchen area, calling out, Hello? As I thought that maybe one of the kids had gotten up. There was no answer and no one was walking around. The whole family was still fast asleep. I returned to the living room, intending to lie down on the couch again, when all of a sudden I began to shake. I started to feel the intense presence of God, and it was getting stronger. My whole body was literally shaking and I started to hyperventilate. The presence of God increased and increased and it became so thick in the room that it drove me down onto my knees, still shaking intensely. The pressure upon my body was so powerful I thought that I was going to die, and this was the last day of my life. The pressure increased even more, and I plummeted to the ground, lying prostrate and face down on the floor. I became so overwhelmed that all I could do was start to repent for the sin in my life. The fear of the living God came upon me, 
and his presence was so intense that it seemed as if someone had turned baseball stadium lights on in the room. The lights were so bright and came on so suddenly that I freaked out, but I couldn't do anything except continuously repent as the Lord kept revealing my sins. One of them took me by surprise and became very confronting. It was the horoscopes. Sunday mornings, I used to read the horoscopes or stars on the back of the Sunday Mail newspaper. Gasping and panting, I kept repenting until I started to calm down and peace began to encase my body. I still couldn't move my head and my body seemed to be frozen to the floor. But this glorious light continued to illuminate me. As my face was down to the floor, all I could do was move my eyes, and I looked upward as something caught my attention. I didn't see any particular person, but I did see the flickering of a burning fire about two meters away from me. As I focused on the fire, I sensed there was someone standing inside it, and I knew it was the Lord. Tears started coming from my eyes, yet I wasn't crying. Later on, a wet patch was left on the carpet from these tears. A voice went through my spirit and said, Well, I'm here for you now. What would you like me to do for you? Ironically, ten minutes earlier I had been shouting at God asking him where he was, and now he was standing right before me. I knew it was the Lord. The atmosphere was pure and righteous. As this voice went through me, I thought that I could ask for more money, but then I realized that money was not making me happy, and I was already quite well off. My marriage, however, was a mess, and things weren't working out the way I had planned, so I just said, Lord, I want wisdom. I kept saying, Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom, over and over again until at one point I started yelling it out and eventually I shouted, In fact, give me a double portion of King Solomon's wisdom. As the words left my mouth, everything switched off, and the Lord disappeared. It seemed as if I was snapped back into reality, although I was still hyperventilating. I thought to myself, He's gone. Did I ask for the wrong thing? This experience left me confused. Actually, I was freaked out. I ran to the bedroom to wake up Paula, and I tried to explain to her that God was in the living room. Needless to say, she was not pleased at being woken up in the middle of the night, let alone being woken up to the ramblings of a man professing to have seen God. I ran out of the bedroom and headed for the den to search for my Bible. Items went flying as I knocked things over until I finally found it. I opened it up and just started reading. I continued to read until I came to Second Chronicles. Then God said to Solomon, Because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. 2 Chronicles 1, 11 and 12 I dropped the Bible and began to sob. I had just experienced an incredible impartation that night.